Good morning, everyone. We've got just a minute to go. Welcome to the Remax Business Builder Series. Grab your coffee. Thanks for starting your day with us. We have so much to share and an amazing panel that is ready to say hello and get to know you all. So come on board. Let us know where you're coming from. Our panelists would love to hear from you. There's a chat box and Q&A box, those of you on Zoom. I'm gonna go ahead and bring the Facebook audience in as well. And we will be ready to go. Okay, whoever Paul is, I don't know how to pronounce your town, but it sounds interesting. <laughs> <laughs> What's Mississauga, say? which is exactly where I am right now. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> It took, me, it, it took me about six months when I first started with Integra to pronounce Mississauga. Uh, <laughs> We're just next door to Toronto. It's very I, similar to Kawakasaga, <laughs> which is a link. <laughs> right, for sure. Same thing with Minocqua, Judy. I know, true. We've got some. <laughs> That's yeah. right. All right. We are a go on Facebook. So... Okay, everyone. Well, good morning, Remax land, and welcome to the Remax Business Builder Series. This latest installment I'm super excited about because we're going to be talking all things luxury real estate. And that's right, luxury exists in any market. You're going to find out today what a luxury property is in your each and in individual market that you're in because it does exist. And we're also going to have some incredibly successful luxury agents that are going to share success with you. They're gonna give you tips on how to enter this particular part of the business and even more. All right, well, welcome. My name is Michelle Hoyt. I am manager of education and development for Remax Integra. We are an independent region of Remax. We are Midwest, New England, Ontario Atlantic. We are also Europe. However, we know there's a lot of you joining us from the Remax company-owned regions across Canada as well as the U.S. So welcome. We are Remax family, and we all like to share and enjoy each other's company for sure. All right, we have an amazing panel with us today, and we're going to go ahead and get started so you can get to know them. By the end of this session, we're going to make sure that you have a really good introduction and some steps on what you should be doing to take to get towards luxury as part of your business portfolio. Okay, all right, I'm going to have our panelists introduce themselves. To my left, and this is just my view, I am seeing Liz. Liz, please introduce yourself to everyone. Tell us all about you, your background, your history with Remax, and anything else you want us to know. Well, thanks. So Liz Levy Prine with the Remax Shoreline office in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Uh, we do cover the seacoast of New Hampshire as well as Southern Maine. I cover, cover Southern Maine. And I have been in this business for over 20 years. And with Remax, I don't know, you guys probably know better than me, a long time. And um, I think that I'm originally from New York, so I tend to talk fast. So you could tell me to slow down if I'm going too quickly. Um, I have been sort of organically growing my, my luxury, I guess, segment of my business um, over time. And it's, it's a really fun place to, to work in, although I don't want to ignore the other aspects as well, because I love first time home buyers and everything in between. But um, I have been really, this year in particular, or this last year, have done a tremendous amount of high-end business, particularly, I think, because of COVID and people running out of the cities and trying to get more into the country and buying up all the expensive inventory as we were just chatting before we went online. So um, hopefully it'll keep going. Uh, I think our biggest concern right now, like everyone else, is a lack of inventory, so... Sure. And in your particular market, what are you seeing as a typical days on market? I mean, if it's the right property yeah. priced well, it's zero or at least a couple by the time it goes pending in the system. So, you know, the, the reality is if it's on the market for two weeks, then everybody's wondering what's wrong with it. Right. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. Well, thank you, Liz, and thanks for all your years with Remax and everything you do in New Hampshire. So we're glad to have you. Okay, Judy, 
Judy, tell everyone all about yourself, where you're from and uh, anything unique about yourself and how much fun you have at Remax. <laughs> I do have fun at Remax because I'm fairly new. I just joined the Remax system eight years ago, my business partner. Julie Winter Piaz and myself left another company and decided to uh, open our other our, our own company. I've been selling real estate for over 26 years, but only been with Remax nine. But I have uh, four offices, soon to be five, and 40 agents. So I'm a broker that uh, not only manages, I list and sell. So I'm in northern Wisconsin. I deal in counties. I don't deal in neighborhoods. Uh, my fishnet is far and wide. I can put 400 miles a day on my car and not even leave my county. But you have to do that if you really want to sell luxury homes in this area. I kind of concentrate on three different counties that I um, sell in, Lincoln, Oneida, and Vilas. And you've got to do what you got to do to make money in this area. Well, I like that a lot. Well, I mean, and obviously kudos to you that you're out there doing as much business as you are. You're always a top performer, award winner in your state. And then you're a great mentor to your agents uh, because they tell me how great you are. <laughs> Thanks. That's good so, to know. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So thank you for being here, Judy. All right, everyone, please meet Olivia representing Canada. Thank you. Very nice to see everyone. I'm Olivia Torn. I've been uh, a realtor now or now a broker for 15 years. I've been with Remax about five years and uh, I love the company. I'm very happy. I run a smaller team, six agents and two assistants, client care manager. And um, we sell on average about 100 homes a year. But I mean, you know, you never know. We've done what we normally do in a year and two months. Um, we travel anywhere within an hour of Toronto, basically, because uh, in today's world, like everyone mentioned, people are leaving the city and moving to the suburbs. So it's been an interesting market and it's been uh, it's been incredible. So that's wow. a little bit about me and um, mother of three children. I do it all on my own. So somehow organization and having my OCD helps me. <laughs> Wow, you are you are just amazing, uh, superwoman. As a matter of fact, in everything that you're doing. So congratulations on all that success and representing Canada. So thank you, um, everyone. Please meet Janelle Wynn. Janelle, please introduce yourself and tell us about you. Of course. Hi, everyone. My name is Janelle Wynn. I'm with Lux BT. Um, we are a digital marketing company um, working with agents nationwide, uh, as well as into Canada and the European market most recently. Um, and essentially, we help agents um, impress their sellers by providing a turnkey program um, to market their listing. We've been doing this um, predominantly, you know, a partnership with Integra for, gosh, almost about two and a half, three years now um, from inception. Um, but we do work with REMAX agents and brokers nationwide. And, um, you know, we'll get into some more information, I'm sure, as the webinar continues. But we're here to assist you guys, especially within that luxury market. Thank you so much. And we're glad to be at Remax Integra. We are so honored to be partners with LuxBT. So thank you so much for being here. Everyone, please meet our very own in-house luxury specialist, Christy Bergman. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Christy. I'm one of our marketing managers here at Remax Integra. And like Michelle said, I'm also our luxury specialist. So I manage all of the marketing for the Remax Collection program. I've been with Remax Integra about a year and a half. Um, and during that time, I, I spent a lot of my time on our big project, which was refreshing our luxury program. So we have a ton of new materials and tools for all of our agents to utilize. Um, we kind of gave the, the brand a new fresh look. So it's all very chic and modern now. Um, and I'm excited to tell you all a little bit more about that today. Awesome, thank you. And, and my virtual background is a result of Christy's hard work and the marketing team and rebranding our collection and luxury line. So I love this background. There's, there's more. If those of you that want it, I'll send all of them in the follow-up email for sure. Yes. All right. Thanks everyone. All right. Let's, let's go through and talk a little bit more in depth and take a deeper dive now into different aspects of luxury. We're going to start with Liz on this one. Liz, how would you describe 
if someone said, Liz, what is luxury real estate? What would be sort of your elevator pitch, if you would, on what luxury real estate is? Well, I think it would be a product that offers higher end amenities and certainly a location um, that would be over and above whatever the typical market is. And I think that it really varies from city to city. I think we're not we're not quite as trendy maybe as some of the other cities, probably like Toronto or LA. Um, it, we're a bit more conservative here. However, that doesn't mean that we still don't, you know, you need quality, quality finishes, quality construction, and certainly location. So we, we have a lot of water in this area. Um, and so a fair amount of the luxury market is waterfront or water view as well. Thank you. Very good description. Judy, how would you describe what luxury real estate is? Well, I agree with Liz, but I, it's, it's, a, it's a, a couple different components. It's, you know, for us here in Northern Wisconsin, the magnitude of the property, it's the uh, quality of the finishings of the homes. And then it's, you know, the first and foremost that we learned in, you know, real estate 101, location, location, location. Again, we're a big second home market here. We're big into uh, log homes, huge, huge log homes. So that's going to look different than from what Liz said, New York and um, even Toronto. So again, the magnitude of the property, the quality of the finishes, and your location, location, location. What do you have that is far superior than another lake property in northern Wisconsin? So Thank you got to so think about that. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Very unique perspectives on both. Now, Olivia, you have a very unique perspective because luxury in your market is both condos and single family homes, is it not? Um, it how is. Would you yes. How would you define luxury real estate? It's definitely something more unique. It is the experience. It's above average. It is the finishes. It is the location. Having a water view or being in a certain street even um, in a particular pocket um size uh square footage heights uh appliances it's a matter of having more than the average person or the average home um you know and and you know it it differs for each person but for the most part it's how they feel and walking into that product um you know how you can share that story with those people and as an example in a condo um i have right now and the offers are tonight normally that condo i'm going to say is worth about 900,000 but it has a little bit of a, a lake view and so i've asked the lady to move out for a week i've completely staged the property it's got great appliances it's got great height and uh, we've got no problem getting at least 1.1 today so um it is about how you present a property um pre-construction even again how you sell compared to other locations um price points, square footage, and then homes, of course, we're in the suburbs here in Mississauga, which is just 15 minutes away from Toronto. And I call it like the Southampton of New York. So basically, uh, if you're in Lauren Park or South Mississauga, anywhere near the lake or little pockets, people are paying, pay, uh, paying a premium. And not just that one street, one house could be, you know, $2 million and a few doors down, it could be $7 million. So you really do have to know the product and know how to sell it. Well, wow, thank you so much. That you, wow, that's a big difference. And I want to know how you got her to move out for a week. <laughs> What's your secret? <laughs> I took on her cat. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. <laughs> and it's like a 20 pound Garfield cat. It is hilarious. Um, you know what? She's a, I love my clients. Um, I've had a relationship with her since I was 12 years old. She owns a, a dance studio. And unfortunately, she's fighting cancer for the fifth time now. And I didn't want her to be uncomfortable. I didn't want her uh, health to be jeopardized in any way, shape or form. But I knew that she wanted the extra money so that she can give it to her children and she couldn't find a cat sitter. So I actually took that on. 
um, had her move in with a sister, you know, that extra luxury service of whether it's driving her all the way to where her sister is or taking the cat or, uh, you know, as simple as um, I'm big on social media and I had my nanny because the cleaning services aren't even open here. So I had my nanny um, clean her fridge and it's a sub zero and she put one of the shelves on the stove, turned on the stove by accident, cracked the entire shelf. And I'm laughing and I'm taking videos of this and I'm sending it to my client and it's all over social media. And I'm laughing, thinking this is going to be like a grand. But you know what? The next day I ordered the new shelf. So it's that, that, you know, I want, I don't want her to question. I want that luxury service to be part of the deal. And so I'm sure we're going to talk more about that today. Wow. That's amazing. I'm seeing some more comments coming in that other, others have taken on pets of their clients as well. So uh, doggy daycare, cat daycare. Well, and your kids are probably loving that too. With the so much. House. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, first of all, I'm sorry about your friend and what she's going through. So our prayers are with her. So uh, Janelle and Christy, how would you define luxury real estate? Janelle, you have also a, a different perspective coming from the marketing side. Um, what, what would you say luxury real estate is? Um, you know, I, I agree in terms of location and because we work with agents nationwide, really our perspective of luxury can really start anywhere at 550 and above is kind of where our kind of threshold is. Um, with the collection, I know there are obviously um, requirements to be called the collection or to be in, included in that. But in terms of our marketing and our programs and the things that we provide our, our agents and brokers, um, luxury means different things in different markets. So really it, it's dependent on that particular agent and broker as to what types of products and services that they need. So really we, we cast a very large net as well. And, and we work with anyone, you know, from a $300,000 listing all the way up to a 3 million, 10 million and above. Um, so really it's, it's everything and anything in between. Thank you so much. And everyone, please stay with us for the hour because Christy and Janelle have an incredible presentation to share with you. Uh, some of the materials that are available and they're very impressive. Christy, how would you define luxury real estate? Yeah, I agree with what everybody has said here. So location, quality, and just above average. Um, but the other thing that comes to my mind is the way we determine that uh, for the Remax collection. So the criteria that we use is two times the average sold price by zip code in the US or by area in Canada. Um, so we do have a luxury threshold list where everybody can look up their areas and zip codes that they work in to see what the luxury thresholds are there. Um, I'll show you where you can find that list a bit later, um, but that's how we determine it for the Remax collection. Thank you so much. And Christy, you've done an amazing job coming to Integra and really building this specialty side of the business. So thanks for everything you're doing. Thanks, Michelle. You're welcome. Okay, everyone. So let's talk about getting started in luxury real estate. It's, you know, obviously it's a very unique clientele. It's a very prestigious clientele, very elite. What, what would you say some of the common myths or assumptions that your peers may have? And Judy, I know you in particular are working with your agents to break into luxury. What are you hearing from others that what are some myths or common misconceptions or I guess intimidation factors involved in getting into luxury real estate. We'll start with you on this one, Judy. I think the perspective of the agents, I think they are holding themselves back because their confidence level isn't there. I think it's holding them back because they're afraid to talk to somebody that has wealth. And I'm going to tell you a really, really big secret. So don't tell our competitors. They're people just like us. And another myth is for some reasons, I think my agents sometimes think they're smarter than us and they're not. They might be in some fashion or some form. They've built wealth because of something they've done, but it doesn't mean they know about real estate. And I think that's a huge, huge myth. And I believe that agents hold themselves back from talking to wealthier people or that they're afraid. And I think that's just crazy because I'm one of these people, if it scares me, I'm going for it because I just love to do that to myself and challenge myself. So um, really they, they put their shoes and their socks on just like we do every day. Uh, they have 
families and friends and they have fear of selling their home and and don't know the process just like a, a hundred or two hundred thousand dollar seller so that's one of the myths that i think that um, agents have about people that are of wealth you know the other myth is i think they think that they're better than us and i think the perception sometimes agents get when you have a very strong seller is that they're better than us and they're not, they're just busier than us maybe. They might be running a very big corporation and they're short, doesn't mean they don't like you. It's just they're, they're very business orientated and they have a list of things to do. And sometimes we take it personally. Don't take it personally, it's not a big deal, you know? Right, very good advice, very good tips. Liz, if uh, an agent that has never had any luxury transactions said to you, uh, what do you hear out there in the form of myths or misconceptions and how would you advise them? Well, I, I agree with everything that Judy said. And I think that um, what's so important is that they are just people. And I think the biggest thing that you can do is be educated in the market. You have to know, you have to know the market. You have to understand the business and that anybody can do by looking up history and driving around and knowing where the properties are and what the values are and, and having an air of confidence, even if you're not really sure, but you need to be confident and know that ex express to the client that you understand what they're going through and that you're gonna be there as, as their advisor um, so that they can trust you. So I, that's the hardest part I think is for people to have that confidence. Definitely. Thank you. Olivia, how about you? Same thing. I agree. Um, it, people feel they are intimidated by wealth, scared or not good enough. And I remember my first deal at a million dollars, I actually was part of a team and I went to my team leader and I said, I haven't called this lead. I'm not going to call this lead because, you know, he's coming from a $12 million house, downsizing to a million dollar house. I don't have a million dollars. I don't know what it feels like. And I'm going to screw up. And I remember he said, you know what, go screw up if that's what you think it is. Uh, you know, you're Olivia Torn and you're just as good as these guys. And I didn't end up doing that particular deal, but I, I do agree with both Liz, uh, Liz and Judy that they are just regular, normal people and they're amazing at whatever business they have. They're kind, you know, maybe they're a little bit sharp, but you can be sharp as well. And um, I do feed their egos a little bit. I do make them feel like they're amazing for what they do, but I'm also amazing at what I do. And I'm the professional here when it comes to real estate and you're the professional at oil or, or whatever the case may be. You're a doctor. You can teach me something and I can teach you something. We're on the same um, level here. And, you know, maybe they're worth $20 million, but I pretend I'm worth $20 million. I just haven't been paid yet. <laughs> No, that's awesome. I mean, successful people want to work with other successful people, right? And like you said, you're the real estate expert. The one thing that I hear a lot from agents is, do I need to dress to the nines? Do I need to have Gucci suits and Prada purses when I go meet with these clients? Can the three of you address that for a moment, like as far as how to present yourself to these to a luxury client? We'll start with you, Liz. I think it's important to certainly dress the part to a degree. You want to be professional. You're not going to show up in an old t-shirt or even, you know, I find most people now are, are living in workout clothes and I'm not going to show up at a listing appointment in my yoga pants. Um, and, but I think it's also important not to go overboard because I don't, I don't think you want to go to the extreme. You certainly don't want to wear high heel shoes and potentially ruin their floors. In fact, I think it's really important to walk in the door and offer to take your shoes off. Um, so I think, I think you wanna look professional and put together, but not to go over the top. They don't need to think that you're making so much money that you have 15 you know, Gucci bags. And Good point. Judy, what's your take on that? Absolutely. You got to dress for the appointment. Come on. Seriously, you're going to go into, seriously. I, right now, guys, I'm in jeans, but I would not be wearing jeans if I was going on an appointment for a high-end listing. Um, they're calling you because you're the professional. So you have to look professional. And I agree, you know, you don't have to go over the top, but dang, put some lipstick on, do your hair. <laughs> you know? 
you know, offer to take your shoes off. You, you, you don't have to go overboard. Um, but you do have to look professional. I'm pretty sure you, if you go into your lawyer's office, they probably look professional, you know? So absolutely dress for success. It's an old term. This dog has been around the kennel a lot, but dress for success. I agree. <laughs> Thank you, Judy. Olivia, you're very fashionable. I've seen your photos and uh, I'm sure you have a really good uh, opinion on this matter. <laughs> It was funny. Um, I was just at a listing appointment and I was not willing to take it unless the client listened to me at $3 million and he wanted 3.350. And it took me almost two hours to make him realize I'm not taking the listing unless it's three mil under $3 million. And I got to a point where I said, would you buy a Chanel purse? And he goes, what? And I said, would you buy, would you spend $8,000 on a Chanel purse? He's like, hell no. And I said, okay, so you don't care about that value. I know the value of your home. It's $3 million. That's the only way I'm taking the listing. And I did get the listing. It took me a while, but I did get the listing. And then he, and then by accident, I dropped my Chanel purse. He's like, is that $8,000? And I go, oh my God. So um, I am a little bit out there. I, I, you know, probably for the first 10 years of, uh, of my business, I didn't dress as much, uh, you know, in color, but I'm as bright pink as you can, you know, my cup, my shoes are colorful. My purses are colorful. I will never dress better than the woman. So if I know who I'm going to see, a lot of my clients are high-end clients. They are happy with what I'm wearing. Um, I would be afraid of the car I would drive because at one point I had a, a Miami blue 911 and I felt ashamed and, you know, I'd park it really far away. And then I realized, you know what, this is who I am. I'm not going to change who I am, but whatever woman I'm going to see, because of course it's a couple, um, it's always about that woman. So um, I will always dress worse than her. Or if I have to put on a black blazer or a turtleneck, I've got it in the car or put my hair up or my glasses on. I will always make sure she's the one that's shining, but my personality is this. And, you know, I'm no, no longer afraid of that. That's fantastic, you know, and I get a lot of agents asking me about that. And I just recommend consignment stores and here in the U.S., Ross Dress for Less. I mean, you can, you don't have to spend a lot of money to look good with a luxury client for sure. So thank you so much. All right. Well, you know what, this will be a good time to transition into our presentation. And I would like Liz, Judy, and Olivia to please comment about any of the Lux VT assets that they're using. So Christy and Janelle, I will turn it over to you. And I'm also going to take a quick peek at questions. I see a lot of comments and we'll make sure we address some of those. Um, so I'll go ahead and let you share your screen and, it, and take it away. Did you want to go, Christy, or should I? Sure. Why don't you start, Janelle, and then I can follow up with some of our other tools we have available as well. Perfect. Let me go ahead. While you're getting that ready, I see a lot of wonderful comments. Greg says, confidence is a key element in whatever you do. Also, you need to test yourself, be bold in learning and constant improvement. Sean Hartley says, I'll try lipstick, but I don't think that'll go well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, we definitely need to talk to the, um, those of you that want to wear a suit, by all means. <laughs> uh, Lisa, Hanley, hi, hi, yeah. Yeah, Lisa Hanley from Remax Advantage Plus. Hi, Lisa. Trying to change my mindset. Every high-end client I've ever had have been high-end stress. Okay, we'll address that for sure. More demanding, not willing to list what they list at. Okay, hold that thought, Lisa. Thank you, Christy. <laughs> Go right ahead. Well, basically kind of exactly what Liz and Judy and Olivia had mentioned. Um, you know, we get those same comments from our agents and brokers, um, whether they're talking about their agents um, wanting to break into the luxury market, or I've got an agent that maybe it's their first time in the luxury market. They're coming to us, they're like, hey, I have this million dollar plus listing, I'm going into a listing appointment, um, you know, what kind of products or resources do you have for us? And I think far and above the materials and the resources that we can provide our agents and brokers really gives them the confidence that they can go in, they can win that listing, um, then they can stand behind all of the marketing that they are um, uh, providing that particular seller. Um, I think that goes so far. Um, we had an actual REMAX agent literally this past week out of Colorado, 
And she exactly said that her broker said, hey, I've got these agents. They're going after a $2 million listing. It's their first listing. Um, they want to be able to go in with this presentation catalog and feel like you know they are above and beyond the competition. They went in, they presented it, they walked out and said, you know what? I have the confidence now because I have this presentation kit that I can show my sellers. Um, and they walked away with the listing. And I think that is everything. Just building that confidence and being able to present that um, you know, again, is really just half the battle. Um, what you're looking at on your screen is basically our kind of queen or, or, or the, our best resource that we provide all of our agents and, and brokers when they submit a listing to us. It's what we call our um, presentation brochure or listing brochure. Um, this particular uh, brochure, it's a digital brochure. All of our marketing is digital, um, but this is a great resource that either an agent that is going after a listing can um, have for themselves. Currently right now, we've got one branded, just a, a generic one for Remax, but we would brand it for you personally with your contact information and your headshot. Um, but basically the 16 page digital brochure is really everything that we provide an agent through our marketing plan. Um, as I said, we provide tools and resources to really impress your sellers in a very turnkey program. Everything is included. Um, we pretty much take all of that responsibility off your shoulders and, and provide that for you. So as you can see, this is kind of the front cover of that brochure. And then as I scroll through it, it just goes ahead and talks about, you know, what this brochure is about, um, talking about the different products and the different resources that are gonna be included in this marketing program from international advertising to a presentation to local social, as well as uh, reporting tools. Um, the third page again, just talks about key points, elite advertising, global exposure, um, the perfect presentation, social marketing, uh, local visibility and client satisfaction. And to be able to kind of touch upon all of those um, points in a listing presentation and, and to number one, not only be able to say, yes, I provide this uh, to my sellers, but also be able to back that up once you do submit the listing to us. And we'll kind of talk a little bit about what that means. Um, but to be able to say DuPont Registry, Rob Report, Wall Street Journal, um, New York Times, Mansions Global, your seller is going to be very aware of those publications. And a lot of times, this isn't their first, um, you know, property. They're going to expect a certain level of service and a certain level of pre presentation in the marketplace. Um, in addition to just those local or those domestic platforms, we also provide global exposure. Um, we provide your listing in upwards of 100 different international listings, um, which again, in areas like Toronto, um, uh, Wisconsin, definitely where you're in a market that is more of a second home um, uh, marketplace, you're going to be getting those international buyers and you want to be able to say to your seller, we're in front of that audience as well. Each page of the brochure is dedicated to a specific either resource or platform. Um, the perfect presentation, that really talks about the tour video. So within an actual live brochure, um, there will actually be an active button that will link back to your tour video. And again, we provide that for you. So just know that each page, you can really talk more in depth as to what that platform is, and then also link back to that actual live ad. But as you can see, we showcase New York Times, Wall Street Journal, our, basically our Lux VT wing of marketing that we, uh, it's our forward facing um, presence, Rob Report, you've got Mansions Global, DuPont Registry. This is our page talking about the international advertising, kind of a, a snapshot of all of the different countries that we utilize. Jawai.com, this is kind of a specialized publication. It's not um, uh, offered to every single listing. There's a certain threshold in order to be qualified for Jawai, but a lot of our agents love that because it does bring um, presence from the Asian market, Australasia. Um, so that's a really key part uh, of our marketing. Of course, we do do some social marketing with Facebook as well as YouTube. 
And then again, that's the back cover. But the unique thing about this particular uh, product or this uh, brochure is if an agent comes to us and says, hey, Jan, I have a listing appointment and I would love to have this presentation to go um, with that, we can actually brand this presentation with an actual photo of the property. And it's as easy if even if you take a snapshot off of your cell phone, we can capture that. We put that photo onto that brochure. We brand it with your um, logo and your contact information. And that's a pretty powerful tool to be able to walk into a presentation and be able to show that, hey, I've already got you dialed in. I've got your you know, photo. This is your brochure, um, which really makes a big difference. And especially in the luxury market, anything that's going to obviously make you stand out. Um, and be above uh, head and shoulders above the competition it is really a, a great tool to have. Hey, Janelle, um, yeah. sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to let you know, we're getting some questions and some great comments about this, uh, this asset that you're showing this collateral. Sure. Do you offer any kind of training or talking points per se for agents to understand how to better present this material? We do. Um, on LuxVT.com, we actually have a blog section that has a ton of resources on various topics. And there are um, a great blog article that talks about listing appointments and what kind of talking points that you want to go into. Um, open house, um, obviously, with the, the climate of today, but um, you know, open houses aren't necessarily happening. But we have pivoted. Um, there's information about 3D um, Matterport tours and how to kind of um, uh, address that. So I encourage everyone to visit LuxVT, check out the blog section, um, feel free to, you know, take that information, utilize it. A lot of our agents will take that information and maybe create a newsletter that they kind of um, put out to, you know, their network or their sellers or, or what have you. Um, and we constantly update that with anything that's currently happening within the marketplace. So absolutely, there are resources there for them. Sure, thank you. And just so everyone knows, there's a lot of questions. Uh, we will be sending links on where to find the, some of the collateral and the assets that Christy and Janelle are going to show. And this is available, LuxVT, for both Canada and the US. So I want to make that very clear. It's available for both. And then, Christy, would you like me to show them, go ahead and show them an actual live presentation? Would that be? Yeah, that would be great. Okay. And then I can jump in after that. OK, perfect. So as I mentioned, this is, is, is basically a generic listing presentation or presentation brochure. I'm actually going to go ahead and show you a live brochure that is actually an active agent um, with us. And as you can see, it's, it's, this is kind of the, the basic colorway. Um, but again, if we were to brand something, we typically brand it for the colors. But um, this is a perfect example of the listing brief or excuse me, the presentation brochure that every single agent will get when they submit a listing. Um, very similar, everything's pretty much templated, although if there's any information that you wanted to change on this page, um, we can certainly accommodate that. This third page, again, is pretty templated, so every uh, presentation brochure will look like that. And then here, as I mentioned, on an, a live presentation brochure, you will start to see these live see in action buttons, and that will actually link directly to the either tour video. So if I were to click on this, it's going to go ahead and bring you to the actual tour video. So you'll get an idea of kind of what that might look like. Um, this is a great tool. Um, some of our agents will go ahead and add that onto their listing. So if they want to get a little bit of a lead capture, they can certainly do so. Um, however, doesn't need to be, they can go ahead and click off of that. Um, we do create the tour video for you, or if you have your own video in its place, we can, of course, accommodate that as well. Which, again, is nice. On a live presentation brochure, everything kind of links back. So you can really take this in. You can share with your seller. And really, all of the things that we provide to our agents and our brokers are really things that will allow them to engage with their seller, to keep them happy, to showcase their property, um, in a live demonstration. As you see the Wall Street Journal, and if you notice everything is branded, it will have an actual photo of the property, that live see in action button. When I click on that, it will actually go to the live ad, which I just basically put in a different tab just for time purposes so that it will come up and load pretty quickly. But this is an idea of what the actual 
listing looks like in one of the publications. It'll have the photo gallery. And then as I mentioned, if you just scroll through there, as I said, each page will be dedicated to that specific platform. And again, a live button directly linking. So not only can you tell your, your seller that yes, I will be advertising you in Rob Report and here's the actual live ad that's created for you. And we've got unique homes in there, mansions global. I have a quick question Again, for said, Judy, Judy, Liz, and Olivia. Are you finding that your luxury clients prefer print, digital, or is it a combination of both? It's a combination. It depends. If they're techie, they love the digital version. If they're not as techie, they like, uh, and they're visual, they like something to hold on to, a copy. It's either yeah. or for me. Yep. Liz or Olivia, do you have any comments there? I agree. I think it depends on the client. They love to see the ads like we have the Boston Globe, um, you know, things like that, things that are even more local, but high end, they think it's great. Mm -hmm. I also agree. And uh, the older generation that prefers print likes to see that you're doing digital so that you can sell it to a younger person potentially. And all of the, the products, the, both the brochure, whether it's the um, presentation brochure, the on-demand brochure, or the actual live presentation brochure, we do provide them in a PDF version. So you are absolutely able to print that off because we do get that as well from, from our agents that you know they want to be able to have a hard copy, whether they leave it behind with that seller, um, they utilize it within a networking type environment. So of course, um, we do provide that as well. The international advertising, I just wanted to pop over to show you what that will look like. You will actually get an individual report for the international portion of your advertising. And this is a kind of a demonstration of the report that you'll get. It kind of showcases how many different countries the advertising is um, being advertised in, exactly which countries. And each of those icons are representative of that live ad. So if I were to click on Argentina, it would look something like this. So again, everything that we provided does have the ability to link back to that live ad for that particular property, um, which is, is, is very unique in the sense that, you know, you can provide that. And again, we always, you know, ask and, and recommend to our agents that these are all assets and resources for you to use, whether it's directly with your seller or to leverage that, you know, really talk about your uh, value proposition to that potential seller, um, as well as being able to use it going into um, that listing appointment, or again, as I said, to engage and to keep that seller happy, to show them all of the marketing that you're doing uh, on behalf of them. And then again, Facebook, and then YouTube. We do provide you links with uh, a YouTube link for the video, as well as Facebook, so that you can put that onto your platforms as well. Um, and again, all of this is based on a pay it close model. Um, all of our fees are, are basically based on how you all get paid. Um, so all of this is included and um, we are offering a really great discount for Integra agents, um, which I'm happy to kind of discuss um, either individually or I know Christy has some of that information as well. I just want to add a quick comment. Those of you watching from the company owned regions, uh, Lux VT also works with your regions. So please see your marketing contacts within the company owned regions to find out more about that for sure. Absolutely. And there's Janelle, there's a lot of questions about specifically about ads and performance and things like that. Um, it, I'm going to be sharing your contact information after this. They can reach out to you with more of those questions. They're great questions, everyone. I'm sorry, in the interest of time, we may not be able to get through all of them, but thank you. A lot of excitement of around course. this. <laughs> all right, perfect. Thank you, Janelle, for that. That's awesome. And I'm glad there's so much interest on LuxVT. Um, I just want to <laughs> share with you all um, briefly some of our new tools and materials that we rolled out um, at the end of August. So if Janelle, if you stop sharing your screen, I can pick it up. Yes, I will. Give me one second here. Okay. Uh, stop share. Got it. Here we go. 
All right, so I will just share a few slides pretty briefly, like I said, um, and then I'll actually show you one of the materials that we actually made for Olivia. Um, so you guys can get a pretty good feel for it. All right, so the first thing I wanted to tell you all as part of this refresh project that we worked on, we actually launched a new website. So if you guys remember one thing that I say today, make sure it is this. Um, so the URL is myremaxcollection.com. And this will be important to remember because this is now your one-stop shop for our luxury program. So you can find everything you need there. You can look up our luxury thresholds there. You can find luxury logos, luxury signage. You can find all of our luxury partnership information, including um, LuxVT, of course. And you can download all of our new materials there. So make sure you write this website down and check it out um, after we're done here. We also, of course, came out with a brand guide. Um, it's a really helpful document. I tell people maybe to save this on their desktop because it might be something they want to refer back to now and again. There are a lot of helpful guidelines and recommendations for luxury real estate and luxury marketing in here. So check it out. And this is probably my favorite piece we have released so far. This is the Remax Collection Lookbook. Um, so this is a beautiful 22 page brochure that would be a great thing to bring to your next luxury listing appointment. Um, we have this available as a PDF as well as a digital flip book where you can kind of flip through the pages a little interactively. Um, you can also print it either with your local printer or we do have an approved printer set up as well where you can order copies. Um, and the best part about this lookbook is that we have customizable pages included in it. Um, so as we were working on this refresh project, we talked to so many of our top luxury agents and something that we kept hearing was that they wanted these pieces to be customizable. They want to be able to tell their own personal story. Um, so this was our way of doing that for the lookbook. So on the left, you have the agent page, or if you work on a team, you have the team page on the right. Um, both of these are available as an InDesign file. If you have a graphic designer that you work with, they are also available as a PowerPoint file that anybody can download and customize. So that will download with a whole instruction sheet. So if you just follow all the steps, you will have a whole customized brochure at the end. Like I mentioned, you can order copies of the customized brochure and they're really nice. We also have some other high-end print materials that will help you all um, in your luxury business. So we have a really nice pocket folder, um, a new business card, a thank you note and envelope. So keep it in mind if you are looking for some high-end luxury materials. We picked a really thick stock, we used nice ink. Um, so these are will really impress your clients. We also have a luxury listing presentation um, available to download as a PowerPoint file. So really the whole thing is customizable. Um, it covers mostly the same information as the lookbook. It's just in a PowerPoint file version. And this is a fun one. We are offering you all an image library. So we have actually purchased a bunch of stock photos and we have made them available to you all to use in your marketing materials. So if you're ever looking for a photo, make sure you check this out first because it is free for all of you. Um, we have luxury lifestyle photos, we have listing photos. So if you're newer to luxury and you don't have many luxury listing photos of your own, check this out and kind of fake it till you make it, I tell people. Um, use our luxury photos that we're providing you. We also have social media assets that you can use to show off the Remax Collection brand. Um, so we have customizable versions and standard versions. Um, so cover photos for all of the different platforms. And like Michelle mentioned at the very beginning, we have Zoom backgrounds as well. We have customizable email signatures too. So you can easily pop in your photo and own con your own contact information. Um, again, all of these customizable items are available as a PowerPoint file. So they are super easy um, to customize. And we have customizable ad templates as well. Um, so you can actually put in all the listing info, your info, and then you could use these to run an ad in one of your favorite publications if you want to. Um, they're available in standard sizes for a quarter page ad and an eighth page ad. 
And we also came out with a new flyer and postcard template that has our new luxury look and feel. Um, so these can be found in Design Center, which of course is a free tool for all Remax agents. Um, once you're in Max Center, you can find Design Center. And if you just search for the word luxury, this new flyer and postcard will pop up right at the top if you are in our Remax Integra network. And then one great way for our agents to stay in the loop with everything going on in luxury is our seasonal luxury review. So this is our pretty new quarterly luxury email newsletter. Um, we have sent out a summer, autumn and winter edition so far. It is sent to everybody. So all brokers, owners, agents and staff receive this. Um, and like I said, it's kind of just a good place to stay in the loop. We cover some different stats to celebrate in there, how well we're doing in luxury in all of our different regions, any important announcements or new things that we've come out with, we put in here. We shout out some impressive luxury listings um, and then any news and stories that are happening in luxury, we love to cover in here as well. And then I wanted to just give a quick shout out and also tell people that we do have a private Facebook group for luxury. Um, so if you're not a member, I would love if you would join it. It's called Remax Integra Luxury. And again, it's kind of a good place to stay in the loop with everything we have going on. And it's also a great place to network with other agents who are interested in luxury. All right, now I will just switch screens real quick. Um, and I'll show you our lookbook that we put together for Olivia. Just so you guys can get a really good feel. I just thought we would walk through it real quick. Um, so this is our lookbook. This is that really nice brochure that would be a great thing to bring to your next luxury listing appointment. So we kick it off with bringing luxury home and right away we're kind of touting those really impressive global numbers that we have here at Remax. When we looked at the Remax collection and we compared ourselves to our competitors in luxury, something that we really think sets us apart is our huge global footprint. It's something that our competitors really can't say. So you'll see throughout our new materials, we're kind of hitting that point home that we're a really global international brand. So we put the customizable page right up front. This is gorgeous Olivia right here. Um, so this is the agent page that you can customize. We also, of course, have a team page. And so you put your contact information, your phone, your title, and a little bit of a bio about yourself. I just want to say that black and white photos are very classy. Very, yes. I think those can come across as even more high end than color photos. Thanks for making that point, Michelle. We're actually recommending that for our luxury brand. We think it gives the brand kind of a modern feel. Um, and we also think it provides a nice consistency throughout the Remax collection. If we have all of our agents using black and white, that will start to be recognized. All right, then we look at our brand values. So we spent a lot of time coming up with these. I won't read all about them um, to you during this call here, but in the end, we came up with, we are iconic, curated, connected, thoughtful, and inspired. So we look at each of these, we are iconic, we are curated. That's where we explain the two times the average sold price rule by zip code or by area in Canada. Um, so any listings that meet that criteria are automatically marked as luxury um, and will appear on our luxury website. So nothing that you all need to do on your end to make that happen. We are connected, we are thoughtful, and we are inspired. Then we have a page on our partners. So we do have partnerships and exclusive discounts set up with all of these companies and publications. And we have our VIP partners. LuxVT is of course listed first because they are our favorite partner for luxury. We have our marketing and our digital marketing where we cover the different websites that the listing will appear on. We have a page on luxury photography, which is of course so important. And a page on our global presence. And this is probably my favorite page in the lookbook. It's where we take our super impressive 
global REVAX numbers up at the top and we compare them to some of our competitors at the bottom. So at the bottom, we have Christie's, Caldwell Banker, Engel and Volkers, Compass and Sotheby's. And our numbers are so much more impressive, you guys. Then we just have a page on our attention to detail where we take the consumer through the different steps throughout the process that we will help them with. And lastly, a page on staging your home. And that wraps up the lookbook. So that was just a quick example of one of our new tools. And like I said, one of my favorites that we've come out with so far. Thank you so much, Christy. And again, I know you've done so much work on the program and amazing. So congratulations. Thank There's you. a lot of, you're welcome. There's a lot of questions about getting started, which is a great way to start wrapping up. I'm going to ask uh, Liz, Judy, and Olivia. First of all, share with us what your primary lead source is for your luxury clients, both buyers and sellers. And then how does one begin to prospect for luxury business? So we'll start with you on this one, Liz. Well, where the where the clients come from, um, I would say buyers, quite honestly, is having very strong reviews online. That's been really helpful um, in terms of listings. It's um, having a reputation in the market, and it's mostly word of mouth. However, I will say, for example, I. Um, I was interviewed for an article during COVID in a local publication that actually a couple of different, it was posted in a few different newspapers. And it's amazing how many luxury listing appointments I have gotten from that one article. So if you have a way to really get your name out there in some publications, it would be helpful. Um, what was the Good next part know. of the question? I forgot. <laughs> yes. No, that's good. Thank you so much. Judy, what's your primary lead source on both sides? And then how does one begin to start prospecting for that type of business? For me, it's referrals um, on the seller side. It's, it's referrals. It's my name. Um, I've been up here a long time, so people know of me. And if they don't know of me, they've heard of me. And on the buyer side, uh, honestly, getting that listing will get you the buyers. Um, they'll come to you first because they believe you know the home better than any other agent. So that's a really good thing because then that we get a double bubble. So um, definitely that's where I would get my leads from. Okay. And then if someone's... I know there was a second part. That's okay. If someone... This wasn't on the list of questions I sent you. See, I threw you a curveball. <laughs> um, what if someone wants to get started in this in luxury? Where do they begin? How do they be start to prospect or search for for business? They need to start looking at those higher end listings. They need to to go and preview them. Um, know your market. Um, that's the way you get into it, and then you start farming. You know, I learned early in real estate that I didn't want to sell 10 $100,000 homes. I wanted to sell one. So um, you've got to start learning that market. And even if you don't have a buyer, go preview it and get to learn that market. And that's the way you get in it. And then you educate yourself. You know, I think I've seen somebody say, how do you get started? Should I take a class? You know, there's a luxury designation. Take it. It was a good class. You learn a lot. And then how do you use that designation in what front facing with clients? Do you talk about that or is that included Absolutely. in your bio or how do you, how do you present that? Absolutely. It's marketing material and marketing yourself that you're a luxury expert in the, the area and that you've got this designation. You've taken additional classes to educate yourself so that you understand the type of people and the type of product that you're selling. Okay. Thank you so much. Olivia, you've been great about answering questions on chat. What advice would you give on getting started in luxury? And then share with us a little bit about where your primary lead sources are. Primarily at this point, it is reputation. It is farming, um, predominantly referrals, past clients, repeat clients, and then whoever they want to refer me to. I wanted to add something where um, you know, when we were newer agents and we were going after homes where, you know, the bigger and, and 
the sharks out there were winning them against us. And we would, we would say, you know, we would have our points about why go with a single agent versus a team as an example. The same thing when you're entering a luxury market, you know, it's in my area, it's usually one of five people or we're all interviewed for it. We all bring something different to the table. We're all friends, all of that. Uh, but ultimately, when I first started to try to get in with those people, um, you know, I would uh, I would tell the client, I am hungry for your business. I want to work for you. I want to be interviewed by you. I want the opportunity. If I didn't win, what can I do better for my next listing against these people? What do I bring to the table? What don't I bring to the table yet? You know, don't be afraid of asking those questions because if you don't get those first few ones, you will later if this is what you choose to do in regards to luxury. So that's really how I started. And now I'm very comfortable walking into these homes. And I, I know it's between me and three other agents. Um, and it seems to be consistent. And I, I really like that. So there's that. Um, and what was the other question? Uh, just, it, I, you basically answered both of those, but yeah, for someone that just wants to get brand new into this, <laughs> well, you know, I, you made an interesting comment, Olivia, when I asked what your primary lead source, you didn't immediately say referrals, you said it's reputation. And Liz, Liz mentioned that as well. She said, it was my online reviews that's really helping. Could the three of you share a little bit more about that? How do you, how do you get those reviews? What do you do with them to repurpose them after they're initially written? And especially you, Liz, and, and how that's brought you business. We'll start with you, Liz, on that one. Well, I think what I've asked specifically when people call me and I ask how they got my name and they tell me that they saw my reviews online, I do ask specifically what about those reviews were, were helpful and why you chose me. And the thing that comes back uh, more often than not is that um, the reviews that I have are very specific about the process and the communication and just basically how I work with my team. It's not just, oh, she did a great job and we would use her again. There is very detailed information about the experience that the client had. And that has been very important for these potential buyers that are coming into a market where they don't know anybody. And um, so now I send out a request for a testimonial or a review after a closing, I do give them that from the client that information and say, this is important to me. I think if you've had a good experience, if you could explain that in your review and more often than not, they do. So that's been very helpful. Well, congratulations on that. Where do you have your reviews? Is it Google, Facebook? Where, where do you typically have them? Well, we send out a, a direct link to both Zillow and uh, Google and give them the option to go to either place or both if they prefer. Mm -hmm. And then I also have, we take that information and then populate it into other places. We might post it on Facebook when we get a good one or various social media. It's in my in all of my marketing, there's a page of testimonials that we sort of update and rotate through and websites and stuff like that. That's great, thank you so much. Judy, how do you utilize reviews in current and future business? Um, just like Liz, you know, having those reviews out there really, really help, but getting an inventory um, of higher end listings is, is gonna help you equally as much. I have people call me because they see my high end listings, but they also see my, my lower end listings and that my work product is, is equally as great for them as a high end listing. The reviews are to me are just like icing on a cake. You get them, you present them, you direct them to where these reviews are. Um, really nine out of 10 people say, you know, just like Olivia said, you know, we see your name, your reputation is, is something that we've watched and we want to talk to you. So it's, it's a, a full package when it comes to, to reviews and reputation. Sounds good. Olivia. I think it's huge. When I was recently against uh, five other realtors, um, the client ended up choosing me and he's the one that was tough with pricing. And, um, you know, I basically told them there's no negotiation on the commission and I'm not 
taking the listing in a nicer way if it is over $3 million because I don't want to waste my time or yours and I don't want to sit on the market for six months and then disappoint you after you've already had a realtor on the market for a year. So I think for me, the reputation is I'm extremely straightforward. If you don't want to hear an honest answer, or don't ask me. Um, I'm extremely black and white. I am aggressive. I do like to smash records. And for me, people know, I mean, the whole industry knows that I am a single mom with three children. The finances are on me. The organization is on me. And so for me, time is extremely valuable, more valuable than money. And sometimes I tell the team, I take a pay cut because I want to be at home evenings and weekends and raise my children who are 10, 11, and 17 and very crucial ages. And so for me, the reputation is if she's working, uh, I'm really working. And, um, and if I'm taking on your listing or even when it comes to buyers, I always tell buyers, I will only work with three buyers at a time personally. We can maybe take 20 on as a team, but personally three. And so, you know, the first time I take them out, I actually say to them, um, here is what I, I have an idea of what you're looking for. At the end of the appointment, at that point, we're going to decide whether I want to work with you and if you want to work with me and at that point we decide whether we want to be in a in a contract together and i would give you my commitment and vice versa and all of a sudden every appointment we go on that first appointment they bring up the buyer agency and why they do that is because now i've done a little reverse psychology and it's like do i want to give you my commitment are you an evening buyer that's going to take time away from my children and so when you do that and you work in a, in a relationship, because you're getting into a relationship with this buyer or seller, you know, make sure you're having fun doing it. At the same time, I think the honesty is really important. Well, you have a lot of new fans, uh, Olivia, based on your $3 million example. In fact, someone's, Rupa is asking if you could tell, if you could actually state again, how you worded that to that client on why, how you wouldn't take the listing unless it was $3 million. Would you mind giving that? Sure. To me? sure. Okay. It's a very recent. So basically um, he was with a, a top, top realtor for one year at 4 million and three and a half million and it didn't sell. So I went to the initial appointment and then he kind of went quiet. I knew he was uh, looking to speak with other realtors when he had me and he called me, he said, you won. I love the integrity. I love the honesty. I love the reputation. And I need someone who's going to believe in my product, which I did. I, I thought it was an interesting home, but I also know it's not going to be an easy sale, but he just wanted me to be positive, which was fine. Um, when I went in with my team member and I went in for him to learn that not all appointments are easy in today's market, I find that some appointments are quite easy. Um, but for the most part, I mean, being an agent for 15 years, we still had pagers and, and we didn't have GPS. So um, things, these are the back to basics type of hard appointments and they matter because you're setting a stage. And, and when I sat on that couch with him and he's kind of steering away from the conversation quite a bit, that's why it took two hours. And I stuck to my guns and I walked into that appointment telling Josh, I said, if he doesn't agree at $3 million, we're not going to take the listing. I know you would get something out of this, but I'm telling you, I'm not taking it on. And so when I went into that appointment, he kept saying, well, you know, the, you know, the public is going to see if, if you do the 3.350, then you can always drop the price. And I said, your house is worth 2.7 to 2.8. If you can tear it down, it's only worth 2.4. If you cannot tear it down because it's historical, which makes things even harder, then it's it's worth 2.7 to 2.8. At over $3 million, we're losing everyone and it's not going to sell. And then he kept saying, well, you know, you're such a good agent and you should try. And I said, I am a good I am, I am a good agent and it's not going to be good for me either. And, he's, and he goes, for you is this about you and he laughed and i said it's about you and it's about me because ultimately i want to sell your home or do you want me to just put a for sale sign on the property and not sell your home for six months and then you give it to another realtor and he goes you know what i'll listen to you and i was so tired after that appointment but i stuck to it and i actually said the words i'm okay if you want to use another realtor at 3.350, I know the value of your home. I love your home. This is what I grew up in. It's two semis together on a beautiful piece of land in poor credit. That's what I grew up in, in Poland. I love it. I love the idea, but it's not for everyone. And so I know I can sell it for you, but not over $3 million. And so he, 
he liked that I actually stuck to my guns. He was a bit shocked and he goes, no, you know what? I can see if you're fighting me, then you'll fight for me. And I said, yes, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. That is awesome. So that's, that's amazing. I love how you said, we're, we're going to find out if you want to work with me and I want to work with you. And that is the pinnacle of your real estate career. When you get to that confidence level and can say that and be confident about that and willing to walk away if it's not a good fit. And I, and I can only imagine how hard that would be in this price range with that commission dollars on the line for mm -hmm. sure. But thank you so much. Um, I don't see any other questions. Let's do final wrap up. Any final tips for your peers watching? Uh, it's been a great session, so I can't thank all of you enough. Uh, Liz, any final tips to your peers? Um, I, again, I just can't say enough how important education is and understanding your market. You know, they're, they're looking to you to be the expert. And so you have to actually present that to them. Thank you, Judy. I have to leave. <laughs> thank you, Liz. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Um, don't be, don't, you know, don't be intimidated by tough discussions, whether it's about price or something else, you, you've got to have some of those tough discussions. I had a similar situation where it was a $3 million listing. I could not get it sold. I had to think outside of the box. I wanted him to split up that property. He did not want to split up that property. Finally, I called him and I said, hey, it's been three years. I haven't got you sold. I'm an epic fail. I'm an epic failure. 20 second discussion, we need to split it up. And he was like, fine, do it. It went under contract. The entire thing went under contract and literally a week and a half. Wow. So, you know, be sure you're, you're strong enough to have those, those tough discussions. And, and, and stand and stand tall like Olivia did and say, hey, I know that I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. So, you know, don't be afraid of those tough discussions and uh, be, you know, and ask that question. If you're competing, what type of agent are you looking for? What are you looking for in an agent? And they're mm -hmm. going to tell you. So that's my advice. Thank you, Olivia. Any other comments? Yeah, this one's an interesting. So I, I'm working with a, a husband and a wife right now. We've done a few deals a few years ago and recently they wanted to buy a teardown for, uh, it was, I almost got it for them for 5.525 and um, they didn't want to spend the extra 25,000. Someone else bought it for 5.7. They've been upset with me for the last two months and they're under buyer agency. They're once in a while talking to another agent and you know, again, they try to intimidate me. And so the other day I found out that the property didn't close the one for 5.7. So now we're talking again and, uh, and he's saying, well, you know, I want you to send a referral to this agent who I was talking to. And I said, no, I've been working on this for a very long time with you. It's not my fault. You're talking to other realtors. I've been speaking to you for the last two months. I found this product. I found it for you at 5.525. You didn't want to pay for it. And I said to him, I will never tell you, I told you so, but I just did, right? And, um, and now it's 5.8. And I remember when he called me and I didn't pick up the phone and I actually texted him saying, I'm sorry, I'm very stressed out and disappointed that now this house is worth 5.8 and two months ago, I could have got it for you for 5.525. I need to take a nap. I am so disappointed. He sent me a text saying, my wife is upset. Let's buy it for 5.8. But that text message kind of put him in his place too, because I'm a human being. And again, I will not let someone who is in this case worth $80 million intimidate me. He's fighting with me over 25,000. Now he's paying a few hundred thousand for not listening. And so it's a matter of working that relationship, uh, not being too tough. Like I said, I will always feed their ego and compliment them. Uh, but at the same time, don't forget they're coming to you for a reason like like everyone has said judy has said you know see the product see what's going on go look at listings talk to luxury specialists do the course whatever it may be and fake it until you make it i am worth 20 million dollars i just haven't been paid yet i love wow, that. that's a great way to end it thank you so much judy olivia christy janelle and everyone for watching we'll be back on april 2nd for the business builder series it's been a fantastic session. Take care, everyone, and have a fantastic week.
Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye.